Hey guys, what's up? I'm Captain Mike. Welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. Awesome topic that we're going to talk about this week here, which is sandballing flag yellowtail snapper. Really, really cool. A very specialized fishery. Something, you know, I've been doing a lot of lately. We just filmed an episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV and uh you know on this topic and i wanted to share a bunch of tips and techniques with you um, while they're still fresh on my mind and that certainly will help you so let's start at the beginning yellowtail snapper right one of the most prolific snapper available almost around the entire state of florida certainly the southern half of the state and of course the epicenter of this fishery is in the florida keys we all know that Key Largo to Key West, I don't know if there's any more popular fish than the yellowtail snapper. Gosh, probably generates hundreds of millions or I don't even know what the number is in tourist income, you know, generated income from people from all over the world traveling to the Keys to load up on yellowtails and just to get out there and have a good time with these fish. Understand though that for the most part, the yellowtail snapper, you know, they're small, right? They're 10, 12, 14 inches. The fish needs to be 12 inches in order to harvest to keep 10 per person is the limit. And really, there's generally no problems with finding a boatload of these 12 inch snapper on the patch reefs. 30 feet of water, patch reefs from Key Largo to Key West, you anchor up, you chum, and as long as you've got some current and some clean water, it shouldn't be long before there's a big cloud of 12 inch yellowtail behind the boat. Some days they're 10, 11 inches, just short of keeper size. Other days they're 12, 13, and if you're lucky, you might catch one that's 15 inches, you know, it's a real big one. But that's the exception, you know, most of the time they're all those smaller fish on the patch reefs. However, there are another class of fish, the next class that goes up from that, we'll call it 10 to 14 inch, and then, you know, 10 to 15 inch maybe that you'll find on the patch reefs, and then the 15 to 25 inch fish, the, the larger fish, and certainly the 18, 20, 22, you know, these fish aren't giant as it is, they're small as it is, they're just a couple of pounds. But to be able to target, find, and fool the larger ones that are often called flags, um, you know, take some skill and some time and some preparation. And really, you know, I use the word flags loosely because everybody has a different definition. Some guys will say that yellowtail needs to be more than five pounds to be a flag. Well, there's not very many yellowtail that are over five pounds. You know, these fish live... I don't know, around 10 years, you know, eight to 13 years. So the average is about 10 years. Um, Florida state record is just under nine pounds, which is giant for a yellowtail. Uh, some guys will consider a flag three pounds or more, some guys five pounds or more, and some guys will use inches and they'll say, well, it's gotta be over 20 inches or over 18 inches or over 22 inches. Honestly, I don't care how you gauge it. I don't care what you consider to be a flag. What I'm talking about is just bigger yellowtail snapper, not the barely keepers. The nice quality fish in that 18 to 24 inch size. That's really what I'm talking about and that's really what I consider to be flags. So first and foremost, you have to understand the characteristics of these fish. And, you know, again, you're going to see all of this in the future on an episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV. You're going to see all of this in great detail on a seminar that we just completed. But I wanted to give you an overview. I wanted to give you some highlights and I wanted to get you started immediately and just have this one on one kind of talk right here. Um, so understand that these yellowtails, you know, that you find on the patch reefs, you don't see the bigger ones there. Why? because they could see the boat. If you could see the bottom, they could see the boat. And they're very spooky. And if they see this big shadow on top of them, these larger yellowtail are just not gonna bite. Okay, the smaller ones will, but the larger 18 to 24 inch fish, they will not bite. So you have to fish deeper water. 
uh, where you just can't see the bottom. You know, and usually that's in the 70 to 90 foot range, okay? So same area as the patch reefs, but over the edge, 70 to 90 feet, pushing all the way out to 110, 120. So we know the depth, right? You're absolutely going to be anchoring. There's no question. You're not going to be drifting for these larger yellowtail. You're going to be anchoring because these yellowtail associate themselves with structure and they're not going to swim far away from the structure. If it's reef, if it's rock, if it's a ledge, if it's rubble, or if it's a wreck, there's got to be some structure nearby. Um, so that's, you know, first and foremost. So we know the water depth. 70 to 120. We know there's got to be structure around. You've got to have current because the current needs to flow that chum out away from the boat. You've got to have clean water. Okay, you don't want dirty green water. So those are really the conditions. Year round, you can target these larger yellowtail snapper year round. They're not really migratory and where you tend to find big snapper big yellow tails on one day, very likely you're gonna find them there again the next day, the next week, the next month, and the next year, all right? They're really homebodies, so to speak. So, you know, make sure that you pay close attention to and record those numbers and, you know, the areas where you're catching them because you can always go back there. So we know we're anchored up there around the structure. It doesn't need to be X marks the spot. There's plenty of leeway. As long as the structure is in the area and your chum is flowing back over that structure, it shouldn't be too long before you attract the yellowtails to you. Okay. Now, here's the key. The key is getting them to bite because first of all, they've got great eyesight. They've probably seen it all before and you've got to coerce them to bite. If you put a typical chum bag in on top, as you would imagine, that chum is gonna flow with the current right up on top, and it's going to flow horizontally. And eventually, little tidbits will you know, make their way toward the bottom, but the bulk of the chum will get eaten before it gets anywhere near the bottom. Jacks, rainbow runners, crevals, all barracudas, all sorts of stuff is gonna be in your chump slick when you're fishing that 70 to 120 on reef and rubble, there's gonna be a lot of bait fish, trash fish, I don't care what you call them, just various little predators that are gonna be everywhere and they pick off all of that chum. So it is important to have that chum flowing off a chum bag, but what's more important is the chum on the bottom. And how do we do that? We do that by sandballing, okay? Sandballing or oat balling, and we're gonna talk a little bit about both. So essentially, what is sandballing, right? We're set up, we're anchored, we've got our chum bag in the water with the chum flowing, everything we've already discussed. But now we wanna drop chum to the bottom and we wanna get it past all of those little predatory fish so this way it gets down there and it attracts the yellowtail that are down on or near the bottom and it really creates this feeding frenzy. So what we do is we mix a concoction. We use sand, it could be beach sand, it could be construction sand, uh, play sand. Look, sand is not always sand, but sand, any kind of sand. And we mix it with thawed ground chum. So take a seven pound block of chum, thaw it out the night before, because it's gonna take you know hours for it to, to get soft, thaw it out the night before, put it in a bucket, and put an equal amount of sand in that bucket. And start mushing, get in there, get in there with a gaff, you know, a lot of guys will use a gaff, you know, to stir it up. I use my hands, I get right in there, I mix it all together, I like to feel that texture and consistency uh, to make sure that it's either wet enough or dry enough. So I get right in there with my hands, I mix it all up. You could add some oats if you'd like, but you don't need to on the sand balls. And what the goal is, is to create this mixture that's like a gummy, peanut buttery type of paste um, texture that you can form into balls somewhere between, 
I don't want to say a tennis ball, you know, it's around a tennis ball size or a little bit smaller, no larger than that. You know, somewhere between a golf ball and a tennis ball. How about that? Between a golf ball and a tennis ball. And you shape this. You just firmly shape it into your hands. You know, pack it until that ball is just packed tightly, right? So it's not falling apart in your hand. It's really packed tightly. If you can't do that, add a little bit more sand to the chum. Mix it up to get a little bit more firm. If it's too, too sandy, you can add a little bit of water, but add the water cautiously because that'll make it too soupy. So you want that consistency. You know, again, like peanut butter or Play-Doh. Form those balls. Drop the ball over the side. It's going to slowly sink and descend all the way to the bottom. On the way down, it's going to leave particles of sand in its trail, particles of chum in its trail, and it's going to go all the way to the bottom and hit the bottom. And when it hits the bottom, generally that sand ball will just disintegrate or it will just disperse. And now you've got all of this chum right on the bottom where the yellow tails are and it really just fires them up and gets them into a frenzy. Now, not only does it do that, but as that sand ball is falling, all of that sand that's disintegrating off that ball and deteriorating off that ball also clouds the water a little bit. So now you're pulling the wool over their eyes, right? You're making it harder for those snapper to see the terminal tackle, and you're creating this chum slick on the bottom. So now I've got my bag of chum flowing on the top horizontally, and I also now am creating this, you know, vertical chum slick as well, and all the way down to the bottom. Now at that point, after dry, and you don't have to overdo it, don't think you're boom, boom, dropping depth charges all day long. One here, one there, periodically, but steady. Now what we do then is we'll grab generally a spinning outfit, in this recent episode, just a 20 pound class spinning outfit. And the reason I say 20 pound class is because in addition to those larger yellow tail in that 70 to 120 foot range, you're gonna encounter mutton snappers. You're gonna encounter big mangrove snappers also. It's gonna happen. So don't fish 10 pound line, 12 pound line. That's too light in this venue. For me, the right choice is 20 pound braid, with a little Alberto knot to a long 20 foot liter of diamond presentation, 20 pound fluorocarbon. Very long liter, so this way the fish do not see that braid. If it's chafed up or nicked on the end after every fish I inspect it, I can cut a little bit off and retie my hook or jig head. Uh, so it has a couple of different purposes there, but mostly stealth. Generally, I'll fish a 3.0 VMC sure set circle hook, no weight at all. I'll take a fresh chunk of either Bonita or a fresh chunk of Ballyhoo, embed it on the hook, on the circle hook, keep that circle hook exposed, and push that bait into that sand ball. Okay, form the sand ball around the bait. Okay, or just push that bait inside there and shape that sand ball so your bait is buried inside that sand ball. Now, once that ball is formed, simply take your leader, the reel is now in free spool. Your reel is in free spool, or at the very least, you've pulled off about 10 feet of line at a minimum, maybe even 20 feet of line. And now I wrap the leader around the ball for somewhere between five and 10 feet. There's no right or wrong, just wrap the leader around the ball, kind of the way you would wrap a rubber band ball. What that does is it helps keep that ball together in shape, okay? And number two, when you drop the ball in the water, as the ball falls, it's gonna unwind, give you an opportunity to pick up your rod, make sure the bale is open, and go into free spool, no resistance, and just feed out line and let that ball go all the way down to the bottom. There's no better presentation. Once it hits the bottom, the sand, the chum disintegrate, the yellow tails come in to feed, and right in the middle, sitting right there, is your bait. 
okay? No weight, supernatural, on the bottom, in 70 to 120 feet of water, Keep the bell open, keep feeding it out. If there's any current, it's gonna, you know, what you need, you gotta have moving water. It's gonna push that bait out, and it shouldn't be long before a line just comes screaming off your reel. Lock it up and just reel tight. It's a circle hook, gonna get them in the corner of the mouth every time. That essentially is how you sandball. There it is right there. Now again, you can use oat balls. A lot of guys have turned to oat balls and basically they'll use regular rolled oats, the stuff that you buy at the supermarket to eat for breakfast, or you can buy them uh, infused with, with you know, fishy flavors at your local tackle shop. And with the oats, it's a little bit different because the oats soak up water. So we take those oats, we again mix it with the thawed chum, and we add some water. And you know we create this pasty consistency. And really what I like to do is both, is I sandball and I drop the sandballs and I'm also throwing oats, the flavored oats in the water. And those oats will help bring those fish higher up in the water column. And oftentimes the big yellow tails, the flags, they'll ball up right behind the boat, they'll eat all of those oats, they'll grab a couple of baits, you'll catch a couple, and then they'll go right back down to the bottom. And you just kind of play that up and down game all day long. On other occasions, you'll never see them. They'll be down deep, you'll never get them up high, but every time you drop a bait to the bottom, boom, you get bit. And as I mentioned, the bonus is the big mangroves and the mutton snappers as well. So it takes some time, it takes some preparation, you need to sand, you need to chum, potentially oats if you wanna go that route. Of course, you gotta be stealthy. I wanna reiterate with the 20 pound fluorocarbon, the 3 circle hooks, 20 pound spinning outfit. There's, you know, there's plenty of variation there, but I'm just giving it to you straight up, you know, to get you started. You're gonna be anchored. Plenty of structure from Key Largo to Key West and even further north up the Eastern seaboard. Uh, yellowtails are caught, of course, in the Gulf of Mexico as well. But really sandballing is more popular here in the Keys, I think, than anywhere else. And all of these charter boats that you see, you know, and I know the charter boat guys are probably gonna be pissed at me for sharing this, but I really don't give a rat's ass. Uh, it's everyone's ocean. You know, they're all out there throwing oats. They're out there sandballing or oat balling, and that's how they come back to the dock with these quality size yellowtails. They don't, you know, really fish those patches, you know, unless there's maybe kids or novices on the boat that like to look at fish next to the boat and catch little 12 inch yellowtails. Um, but if you really want the bigger ones, you got to push the limits a little bit. You got to go a little bit deeper. Okay, you got to do this preparation. You got to get your hands dirty, and it is dirty. You're going to have sand all over the boat, chum all over the boat. Um, but it's part of the fun. You know, it's part of the fun. And when you come back with limits, a flag yellowtail, you'll see that it was all well worth it.